Hello Fearless Gamers, Matt here for Fearless Games, and today I'm doing another entry in the book corner. This time, the book that we're going to look at is... A Thousand Suns, All is Dust by Graham McNeil. Technically, the All is Dust isn't part of the title, but I think it sounds cool to say. But this is now, like I said, now this is a book about the Thousand Suns, and basically is a depiction of them from just before the Trial of Magnus, all the way up to the Space Wolves invading Pros um, uh, the Prospiero, or, um, Pros or Prospero, however you want to pronounce that. Um, all in all, comparatively to the other books I've written, re written, read, this one's a little bit more wordy, in a sense. There's a lot more big, um, there are bigger words in this book than there were in the last ones that I've read. Um, it doesn't detract from it, you know, they, they're not, you know, they're, you can still, you can, you, they're words that you'll understand, and if you don't understand the text around them, the sub, you know, the context that they're in will help explain what the words are, what they mean. And in general, it's an interesting take on the Thousand Suns. Again, it's one of these stories that gives you their perspective and makes you see them in a different light than you would have normally beforehand. This time you're getting their perspective on psychic powers, their perspective on the whole trial of Magnus, and their whole perspective on the whole invasion of the Space Wolves. And you also get a feel of, of um, Magnus's um, thoughts on the whole situation and what he, what, and ha what he th thought he was doing and all this other stuff. It's actually a really interesting read on that front. You kind of get a different light on it. Sometimes it feels like there are one, some parts I'm like, there's there's supposed to be a chaos legion, right? And so it kind of is like there are parts of it where you're trying to figure out why that why that in the 40k game there are chaos legion when you're re through, re thumbing through this book. But you can understand, in a sense, how it may, how it could ex um, extend from this. You know, more of like, you know, past um, recollection and going, okay, you know, this is where they started at, this is where they are now when you look at the codexes. Um, story based wise, it's kind of on the dull side, in my opinion. There were a lot of moments where I was just like, can we get on with it? Can we get on with it? And there were points where it was like, oh, this just happened. Oh, Scotta ends eventually now. So there was parts of it that kind of dragged in, in the story, and there was a lot of points that were very confusing as to what was going on. Like, there was a, like, there's one part in the beginning where they're talking about statues, and then all of a sudden they're titans, and then they're statues, but then they're titans, and it's like, are they statues or are they titans? You know, what are they? It's really complicated as to what he's, what the writer's writing about. There are times where his writing goes a little, gets a little meshed together, and I started losing track of what events were happening, what was going on at this cur at the current moment, what has just happened, what is about to happen, and stuff like that. So I did find it a little bit more confusing than some of the other books I've read so far. Um, in terms of and uh, in terms of if it was worth reading or not, I think it is, especially if you are a big fan of the Thousand Suns or if you're just wanting to get an interesting look on the chaos on the Traitor Legions. This one's probably so far the best one that I've picked up that gives you a great perspective of the Thousand Suns. Um, it also gives you an interesting look at just how psychically powerful they are. And it's really like, whoa, you know, it gives you more of a respect for a sorcerer of the Thousand Suns and just what they were capable of doing. And there's a couple of interesting little um, side characters in this that I hope make it into the new codex because it would just be awesome if they were capable of doing this, um, if they were capable of fielding some of the units that were mentioned in this book. It also showed an interesting take on just psychic powers in general. Is basically this gives you the idea of how psychic powers were um, viewed before the whole the whole um, 
the horse heresy and the whole issue of librarians and all that other good stuff. So, on a whole, it's a fun book. It's not the greatest, so I wouldn't say rush out and get it now, but I would definitely, if you have a moment and you have the money to spare, to pick up this book and add it to your collection, because it is a very good book. It's just not a... I didn't really think of it as much of a page-turner. I felt I was reading more of it just so I can get through it, rather than I really need to see what happens next. Granted, there were a couple of moments that I really wanted to read up on, just so I could see a more detailed um, um, account of the events, but on the whole, there was never really a moment where I was like, what's next, what's happening next, what's happening next, what's happening next? It was more of a, okay, all right, okay. It was very much, I never felt myself enthrall really enthralled in the story, but... Like I said, if you are a fan of chaos, if you just want to get a nice, interesting look at some of the of the legions that went traitor before they went traitor, definitely pick this book up. You can grab it at um, Barnes & Noble, and I believe it's still available on the Games Workshop site. So, like I said, if you have the, ca if you have the spare cash, pick it up. But, um, like I said, it's not a read that I would say run out now and get. So... That is all for right now, and until next time, fearless gamers, take care.